Psalms chapter 14 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. So this is David's psalm, another psalm. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Atheist, there it is. Now notice it says said in his heart. Now anybody who's going out in a public ministry or anything like that, I'm an atheist. And a lot of times, my experience is, that's an excuse the devil gives them to say. That once, you know, I'm an atheist, we're supposed to run away. And I dealt with one guy one time, you know, you know, I'm an atheist. I talked to him. And I got to listening to him and got explaining things. And, all. and I told him at the end of the conversation, I said, let me tell you one thing. He goes, what's that? I said, you're an agnostic. He goes, what's an agnostic? I said, well, what's an atheist? I don't know. I said, well, an atheist is somebody who doesn't believe in God. Not me. Well, that's what you said. An agnostic is somebody you teeter. You, you don't know, but you're not sure. And <clears throat> the definition of a true atheist, like I said, the devil has certain things that people you witness do. They just say certain words. Judge not, least you be judged. Or, and don't run off, oh, I'm an atheist. Don't run off, challenge them. See how much an atheist they are. And if it comes from the heart, then they're an atheist. They are corrupt. Who's that? The atheist. Corrupt means it, it, it's gone bad. It's gone sour. Listen, we're born of God. We're a creation of God. In our heart, we're to worship God. Something built in us, something in our conscience, there's a God. Maybe not the true God yet. And an atheist has taught himself or has been taught himself, you know what? I'm corrupted. I deny the existence of God. They, those who say there's no God in their heart, have done abominable works. Abomination. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven. Also, God does see. And we see many places in the Bible the wicked are, you know, God can't see us. Hold the eyes of the Lord in every place we hold evil and good. The wicked men say, you know, God, God will not see it. God doesn't know. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men. So in heaven where God is, he looks down. We know that God looks down. Now, as far as the people in heaven, we don't know. But what about the angels? The Bible says in, in the gospel look that they rejoice when when, a, when a, a, a one sinner has repented and gotten right. And we know for sure we're told that Revelation 12 and Job, that the accuser of the brethren goes up before God and says, you see what this person's doing. So heaven is not completely blind to what goes on, on to the earth. To see if there were any that did understand, understand, see, uh, and God. God says, okay, I'm looking down. Anybody, listen, if you were really, truly searching for the God of the Bible, you would be found. It is God is recorded in the gospel. Again, the gospel looked at the guy had a hundred sheep, one sheep, sheep went out and got lost. God went looking for that one sheep. There was a woman who lost some coins. She went looking and cleaning for that one coin. When men go seek after God, they seek after a God that they go into a grocery store and they get coupons. I want a God that agrees with my sin. I want a God that hates the people I hate. I want a God that will agree with me. They're not searching for the God of the Bible because they go get a Bible and they would honestly read it. Now, very rarely, maybe somebody would search. But look what God said. I, I, he says, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They, the children of men, are all going aside. They are all together become filthy. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now we're going to see Paul here. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. 
And we find that in Romans chapter 3. People say, I'm good. That's another thing. I'm good. No, you're not. By what good standard are you good? People have a standard of good that's not someone else's good. Listen, my good would not be the good of a man that's in prison. A man in prison's good would not be the good of a politician. The, uh, uh, the, the good of a politician wouldn't be the same as one who's involved in sexual crimes and sexual uh, pornography and all that. A man that does pornography, whatever form, he thinks he's doing a, doing a good thing and providing the service for the public. But the Bible says, no, it's not good. A Christian may do things, and the Bible says, no, that's no good. But he thinks he's proper and well, and God is pleased. A lot of Christians fall in under the pride, under the sin of pride. They think it's good, and, and the Bible says no. So Paul is quoting from Psalms chapter 14. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now, look what he said. Now, picture this. I'm on the street. Somebody, oh, I'm good. I said, no, you're not good. You do not do good. Oh, yeah, no, not one. Don't even start the argument because the Bible says, there is none that doeth good. What? Well, no, not one. Don't. No argument. The Bible and Paul and, and David all take for account you're going to get an argument when you're arguing with someone about being good. Have all, and Paul says in chapter 3, all have sinned. So Paul is quoting directly from chapter 14. For all the workers of iniquity, no knowledge. Knowledge of what? They have knowledge of sin, that's the iniquity they're doing. A man that does pornography, he knows how to work the cameras and how to do things special like that. A man that steals knows, you know, what houses to break into and how to break in the house and how to avoid the, the alarms. He knows all those things. That's knowledge. They don't have the knowledge of the holy. And you'll find that in the Bible. Who eat up my people, according to Psalm 14, it would be Jewish people. As they eat bread. Cannibalism. And you're going to say, are you going to take that literal? In the tribulation period, yes. When, they, when they're slaying Jewish people and drinking their blood at the mass. Listen, they pretend to, break, to drink Jewish blood today. They claim to drink the blood of Jesus Christ with their magic. It becomes the literal body and blood of Jesus. That's a Jewish man. you got to read... The, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12 where they are trying and devouring a Jewish child and called not upon the Lord well that's the tribulation period and the whole world devours tries very few do not try to devour the, the Israelite people the Jewish people they were there were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Who are the they that are in great fear? The ones that they're eating in the tribulation period. The time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a great fear. What's the great fear? The Antichrist wants all Jews dead. He is going to do above and beyond the, the finished work that Adolf Hitler didn't finish. And the Russian and every nation has been against the Jews. The devil hates the Jewish people ever since Abraham and having his wife Sarai be barren. Notice how all the children of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their wives were barren. And then when when Isaac is born, there's a problem between him and Ishmael. God's like, and Sarah, like, get Ishmael out of here. And then when Isaac has his two boys, Esau and Jacob, there's a battle between the two boys there. And then when Jacob gets married, he ends up with four wives and 12 boys. And you get to a point that, you know, one group of the boys are trying to kill one boy because he has the dreams and he has the revelations of God. 
One boy sleeps with, with Jacob's wife. Judah gets out there, I mean, the one of the line of Jesus Christ, and he's out there having a, in, having relations with his daughter-in-law, thinking she's a harlot. And you see through the line of the Jewish people, you see the devil attacking, and the devil is going to attack during Jacob's trouble. Ye have sinned, excuse me, ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. <coughs> there's two, well, there's no middle class in the tribulation period. You're either rich with the mark or you're poor with no mark. That's it. And the Bible says as far as that mark, if you don't get it, you don't buy, you don't sell, you don't do nothing. You're poor. The only help you're going to get is going to be a few sheep nations that Jesus Christ will reward at the second advent into the millennium for helping those Jews. Because those Jews will, a proper Jew, an Orthodox Jew will not receive that mark. And Orthodox and proper Jew, when they see that, that veil get opened up and there's the Antichrist sitting there proclaiming to be God, they know that no one belongs in that room but once a year. And I wonder if he's going to make himself known on the Day of Atonement. When the priest was to go in there once a year, twice, for his sins and for the sins of the nation of Israel. I mean, is he going to go in there as a high priest and come out? Here I am sitting. Is a, is the high priest going to go? Uh, it may not be in the day of the Torah. It may be on an off Jewish celebration. Now, let's not get to heathenism. But a Jewish celebration goes into the temple like John the Baptist's father. Where is he? Where is he? He's taking forever. What's going on? And he comes out. Maybe he goes in there. He doesn't come out and all the veils are open up and there he is sitting on the mercy seat. I don't know. But at that point, when, when Jesus says the abomination of desolation to be where it's not to be, ought to be, Orthodox Jews right there will know uh, it ain't kosher. And I'm not joking either. That ain't kosher. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion. Who is the salvation of Israel? Jesus Christ. Where is he going to settle? Zion. Where is Zion? It is Jerusalem. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity, that's an interesting word. That's a word that used in, in the last chapter of Job, return to captivity. That's a Jewish word. It's always been a Jewish word. And it's a Jewish word of the people in the tribulation period. Bring it back to captivity of his people. That's the Jewish people. Jacob, Jacob's trouble, shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. When? When that salvation of Israel come, Jesus Christ on the horseback. With the church behind him. Now, we're not done. You need to keep your place in Psalms 14. Let's run over to Psalms 53, keeping both plays in hand. So you can flip back and forth. Because we got something interesting here. Psalm 53 says to the chief musician upon Methodist and it's a temple choir they say a Mashio instruction a Psalm of David. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Does that sound familiar? What's well, the fool has said in his heart that there's no God. That's 14. Corrupt are they. They are corrupt. And have done abominable iniquity. They have done abominable works. So the works of verse 14. There are works that can be iniquity. There is none that doeth good. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven. The Lord looked down from heaven. Oh, who's the Lord? God. Who's God? The Lord. And you know sometimes that Lord, verse 6, L-O-R-D, you know that is the salvation. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is God. Jesus Christ is God and God is Jesus. 
to see if there were any that did understand. So let's see what it says over here. Lord took down to see if there were any that did understand and that seek God and seek God. They're all going aside. Everyone. <laughs> so what does all mean? All means everyone <coughs> of them is going back. What's going back? Going aside. Bible definition with the Bible, scriptures with scripture. They are all together become filthy. They are all together become filthy. Filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And Paul, Paul's quoting from two passages of the Bible. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? And call not upon the Lord. They have not called upon the Lord. See, it's changed, but it's the same meaning. They were there were they in great fear. They were they in great fear, for God is the generation of the righteous. For God has scattered the bones of him that encamped against thee. Uh oh, a little more information. Thou hast put them to shame because God has despised them. Gives us a little more information in the tribulation period. Scatter the bones. That's the, that's the, the uh, oh boy, uh, the battle of Armageddon. That's where Ezekiel says there's going to be a job in, in the, in, in the point of time, in the millennium, that people are going to go around, they're going to see a bone from the, from the, they're going to have to go bury that bone. They're going to have to clean the land. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come to Zion. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people. When the Lord, God, both the same, bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad, and Israel shall be glad. So there's two sons. It's a verily, verily for the atheist. And we run to the fact is, there is no man righteous without God or the Lord. You're not looking for God. And there's been stories of preachers I know and Christians, they went running to a church, they went running for a Bible, only after a preacher or a Christian dealt with them when the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Why do you got to preach the gospel? Because your common person is not looking for God. They have no idea. And when you see the reactions when you got any public ministry, oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. You're not doing it right. That's not what Jesus would do. You're, you're scattering the people. And by their remarks, and I'm good and all that, you have no idea what the Bible says. I don't know what kind of God you're shopping for, but you're not looking for a holy and righteous God. And you're not going to find them in the church or the assembly that you're in. Well, I'm in a Bible-believing Baptist church because somebody invited you. You didn't go walking in there by chance on your own. And if you had... You've been dealt with. You got a mother. You got a father. You got a co you got somebody who's praying for you. Because even as a saved Christian, I am. My flesh still is against the Bible. And Paul said, "The flesh is at enmity with the spirit, and the spirit is at enmity." Our flesh does not want to serve God, and our flesh does not want to do anything for God. And when we're talking about people who are not saved, have not received the adoption, who have not received the Holy Spirit, are not born again, they have nothing that seeks after God at all. Well, they may have a God, but it ain't the God of the Bible. They may be all of a sudden looking to God, but somebody witnessed to them, somebody gave them a gospel tract, somewhere they heard a hymn, somewhere a passage of the Bible has been given to them. When that Ethiopian eunuch is reading Isaiah 53, he turns to Philip and said, Who is this man? 
Why didn't he, on his own, without Philip, why didn't he turn that chariot around and go back to Jerusalem and say, can you guys explain this to me? If he was searching, he's going back to Ethiopia. He didn't turn around and go back to go get God. He already did this religious service. He needed a man sent by God to explain to him, this is who God is. Oh! Your natural man, that's why we go out and bug the people. That's why we go out and pester the people. Because they're not looking for God. And they'll, oh, I was looking for, no, no you weren't. Because in this day and age of 2020, if you got a computer, if you got a smartphone, you can get the Bible and you can read the Bible, but you ain't going to do that. Many Christians don't even do that. 